God bless you, and welcome to Christ Community Church Online. And happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers and grandmothers and great-grandmothers. We celebrate you today. We've come together to worship the risen Lord Jesus Christ, to sing of his greatness and his power and his might, and to study what it means to be a woman of prayer, a grandmother of prayer. John Bunyan of Pilgrim's Progress called prayer a weapon. It's a weapon to defeat the enemy. And I want us to see this together today in Ephesians chapter 6. But first, let's pray together today and invite the Lord's presence here to Christ Community Church. Father, thank you for your presence, for your power. Thank you for meeting with us here in this place. We love you and we worship you, and we commit this day to you, and we pray a special blessing over all of the mothers and grandmothers today. Meet with us today in Jesus' holy and precious name. Everyone said, amen. Let's worship the Lord together and sing of his greatness. This song says, blessed be the name of the Lord, and we bless him for his power, his might, his kindness, and his goodness. Sing together this morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found desert place the I walk through the wilderness blessed be your name every blessing Welcome to this Mother's Day interview 
I think your heart's going to be touched deeply when you hear Rose's story. With me today is Ron and Rose Leonte, and they are servant leaders here at Christ Community Church. You both serve in Awana, is that correct? Yes. yes. And uh, I'm so grateful for your ministry and your faithfulness. Now, have either one of you had the coronavirus over the no. last couple of weeks? <laughs> no. no. And uh, the closest you've come to corona is that, that your mother was born there. And a godchild. And a godchild. Lives there. Lives there. No. But that's Corona, California. That has nothing to do with the coronavirus. That's true. But, but Rose, you have a tremendous story uh, growing up, being born. Mm-hmm. And you have a story of forgiveness as well. And on Mother's Day, oftentimes uh, there can be challenges from our past. And we, we have loss that we process. But sometimes we have forgiveness that that comes back to our hearts, and we have to say, no, I've chosen to forgive. And that's what you've done, mm-hmm. isn't it? Mm-hmm. Tell us about your story, how, how you came into this world. Okay, I, I was about, well, I was about 10 when my grandmother passed away. And um, so my mother told me the story about, she was 16 and pregnant and unmarried, and... Um, my maternal grandmother was they are she was all packed up and ready to take mom to sacramento for an abortion and um so they they were just ready to go and my paternal grandmother went over to the house and she begged um, mom and her mom to not do the abortion that she begged them to uh, let my mom marry my dad. She said, I will make my son marry your daughter. And so, so that's what happened. They, um, they said, okay. So mom and dad were married, and uh, mom was 16 and dad was 19. They were very young. And uh, so they tried to be married for a couple of years, and then they had my sister. And and so then after my sister, they just gave up and went their separate ways and left, left us with my grandmother, our grandmother. And um, it was the most wonderful time of my life. It, like I always tell Ron, the, the beginning of my life was so perfect. And the ending of my life is so perfect. And... In between, there were some things going on, but, but uh, it was a wonderful 10 years, and uh, we lived there with Granny, and uh, we called her Nana, and, uh, and then when she passed, uh, my mom and dad thought, well, they'll get together and try to do it again, but uh, it, it was really difficult eight years that they were together, and they had more children, and so, and they ended up getting a divorce finally, but... Um, Anyway, I was just, I'm so grateful for my grandmother for saving my life, for letting me live, and, um, and for enjoying, she was a courageous woman. She was, she had strength, like I, I can't believe. She was a single mom way back in 1919 with my father uh, because her husband died. And um, so she was a single mom and raised him. It was, and, and she went through, well, 1917 was a war. And she had, when she had my dad. And then she, they went through the Great Depression. And she was just a woman of strength. I, you know, she must have known the Lord. I don't know. She sent us to church. Every Sunday we had to go to church or we couldn't go to the movies. <laughs> and so... You had to go to church first yes. on Sunday oh, yes. so that you could go to the, the Sunday afternoon, afternoon matinee movie. Yes. and see the movies. Every Sunday. That was a smart grandma. <laughs> she, is, she was. She was a wonderful woman. And, uh, and then, uh, of course, she signed us up for catechism and, and everything, communion. And, you know, she made sure we knew God and Jesus. Now, the Holy Spirit, I didn't know. I mean, you, I heard about it, but... When you're little, you don't understand. But I knew Jesus, 
but I didn't know him in a personal way until way later in my life. And uh, then I had a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus. And it's, it's the most wonderful thing that's, that ever happened to me. Wow. So your mom was 16. Mm -hmm. Her choice was to have an abortion. It wasn't her choice. It was, it was her mother's. Her mother's choice. Mm -hmm. But it was your grandmother that mm -hmm. stepped in and begged them not to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so your life was spared. Mm -hmm. And then they would have another child, your sister. My sister, Peggy. Mm -hmm. But it was grandma who uh, made sure that the Lord and his word was in your life. Oh, yes. Well, now, you had to face forgiveness at some point in your life. Tell us mm -hmm. about that. Well, that's an interesting story. I never had a close relationship with my father. And uh, when I met Ron, my first husband had passed away. I had, I had three children, and then my husband passed away. And I was single for about 11 years. And that's when I started to learn about the Lord and connect with, with some Bible studies. Not a lot, but some. And uh, then when I met Ron, we dated for about a year and a half, and he, you know, he said, you know, I want to marry you, but I can't marry you unless you forgive your father, because I don't want, I don't want this to be in our, you know, in our lives, this unforgiveness. And I hadn't talked to my father for so long, and... Uh, so then he, I said, well, what do I do? I, I want to call him up and say I forgive you when I really don't. And uh, he said, no. He says, let's, let's graft a letter. So I, I started to write a letter, and it was full of resentment. And, you know, my heart wasn't right. And, uh, and I didn't want to do what I was doing, but... Anyway, he says, he looked at the letter and he says, no, that's not a good letter. <laughs> <laughs> and so I said, okay. So we, we started another letter. And he says, well, do you love your father? I said, I don't know, I guess. And um, so I said, well, think about it. So I thought about it and I thought, you know, later I said, I love him. I love my mom, I love my dad. When he says, well then write down that you love him, that you care about him, you know. And so we did another letter and, um, and then I sent it to my sister because I, I thought, well, if I send it to my dad, he's not gonna read it. So I sent it to my sister who lives in Reading and he lived in, in Reading. And she um, drove up and gave it to him uh, and left it there, and he didn't read it then. So then um, he read it le later. And we actually, actually did start a relationship then. And it was, well, all I can say is when I said, I forgive you, Dad, when we finally met, and he said, I, he said and please forgive me too. It was, it was like something in my heart. It was, it was, it was just like a release. It was, a, it, was, it was really beautiful. And so we hugged and we kissed. And, uh, and that was, what, 30 years ago, huh? about 30 years ago. And he's gone now. But uh, we had a good 27 years together. And... and we had, we had a closeness, of, you know, I'd visit him, we'd visit him, and he'd visit us. In fact, he drove all the way to Arizona when we, when we were living there. He drove all by himself to Arizona to visit with us. And he was 90. He was 90, and uh, he passed when he was 95. But we had time together. So I'm very grateful that, that Ron was uh, able to. Yes. Yeah, and I had a release of all that resentment and hatred and it was just ugly and so then we got married <laughs> and uh, it's been good uh, I know um, 
it's so important because as the Bible says, you know, we have to forgive those who sin against us. Our God won't forgive us. So anyway, um, Ron and I have had 29 years of marriage, <laughs> and uh, it's been it's been good, really good. So, yeah. Rose, thank you. Thank you for telling us this story, yeah. and especially the story of forgiveness. And in just a moment, I'm going to be preaching on the power of prayer for mothers and grandmothers. Mm -hmm. And forgiveness is such a big part of prayer. Mm -hmm. I believe that unforgiveness is what keeps us from praying passionately and faithfully. And it, it really works hand in hand. When we choose to forgive those who have wounded us and sinned against us, as Rose has said, God bless you for living faithfully. I trust you'll enjoy this powerful message on being a godly woman of prayer. Take your Bibles, turn to Ephesians chapter 6, and I want us to see the weapons of our warfare. Moms, I want you to see how powerful you are when you commit yourself to becoming a woman of prayer, consistently praying in faith, believing. Now, we have been given the belt of truth. We have the breastplate of righteousness. We have the shoes of the gospel of peace. You have the shield of faith. You have the helmet of salvation, as well as the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. But I want you to see how powerful you become when you hold all these pieces together through prayer and you begin to faithfully pray to the Most High God. Follow along as we read in Ephesians chapter 6, beginning in verse 18, with all prayer and petition, pray at all times. In the Spirit and with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. And pray on my behalf that utterance may be given to me in the opening of my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in proclaiming it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak, but that you also may know about my circumstances how I am doing, Tychicus, the beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, will make everything known to you. And I have sent him to you for this very purpose, so that you may know about us and that he may comfort your hearts. Peace be to the brethren and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all those who love our Lord Jesus Christ with a love incorruptible. And may the Lord add his blessing to the public reading of the word, the proclamation of his unchanging truth. The very first biblical truth that we see in this passage is, is that we're to pray at all times. Moms, we're to pray at all times. The New Testament as well as the Old Testament Hebrew scriptures mentions many forms and circumstances, even postures of prayer. Jesus prayed while he was kneeling. He prayed while he was standing, while he was sitting. Undoubtedly, while he was walking, he was communing with his Father. So prayer is a way of life. 1 Timothy Chapter 2, verse 8 says, Therefore, I want men in every place to lift up holy hands. We're to lift up our hands to the Lord in surrendering our hearts to Him and pray. Faithful followers of the Lord Jesus Christ are people who pray. And, and women, you might want to ask yourself, give me ideas, Holy Spirit, how my prayer life can increase as I, as I study this passage of scripture, because that's one of my goals for you today, that you and I would be people of prayer. Now, Jesus said in Luke 21, 36, watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy 
to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of God. The early church were continually devoting themselves to prayer. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. They were people of prayer. And I want you on this Mother's Day to take inventory of your life and that you would ask the Lord to help you take it to a new level as being a mother of prayer, a grandmother of prayer. The psalmist, out of desperation, had learned that morning, noon, and evening, he would cry out to the Lord. Psalm 55, verse 17, he would pray to the Lord. Jesus' deepest prayer was for his disciples that they would know the truth of who God is. And in John 17, verse 3, he prayed that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. God sent Jesus to walk among us that we might know him and be like him. Now, to pray at all times, obviously, does not mean to have a, a formal time of prayer where we stop everything and we're, we're on our knees continually. That's not possible for you young moms and uh, for you busy grandmothers. But it's the waking moments of recognizing that we're walking with the Lord, that we're acknowledging Him in all that we say and do. It's a pattern of how we live our lives. It is not meaningless repetition, but it's with our hearts calling on the name of the Lord. To pray at all times is to continually be God conscious of his blessings, of his provision, of his health and strength that he gives to you. It's surrendering your heart to him moment by moment and saying, Lord, I'm living this life for you. I want my life to bring glory to God. Colossians chapter 3 verse 2 says, Set your mind on things above, not on the things that are on the earth. So all through the day, you're setting your mind on heavenly things, on things above. You're thinking long-term about what it would be like to stand before the Lord and to say, to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into my rest, enter into my God. Isn't that what you want the Lord to say, moms, about you? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. The ultimate purpose of our salvation is to glorify God. Remember, he's chosen you and to bring us into rich, intimate relationship with him. Whenever we pray as genuine followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we're to be on alert, we're to be persevering throughout every day. Some days are easier than others. And some days, let's just be honest, are a challenge. But perseverance is something that's all through the scripture. I can't think of anyone who demonstrates a greater level of perseverance than moms. And that's what God has given to you. Just a degree of that persevering, I'm not going to quit. There's no give up in me. Now, the word devote, and we've read it twice now already, it actually means to be steadfast, to be constant, to be persevering. And that's what is written in the scriptures about you, to be devoted, to be persevering, to be constant. This is the word Moses used in Hebrews eleven twenty seven to describe the endurance of that led the children of Israel out of Egypt. Now you, you have to realize that it's give us this day our daily bread. It's moment by moment sometimes, because even day by day is overwhelming. But I promise you that if you'll draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. Jesus spoke of the parables of the persistent neighbor and the widow to illustrate this biblical truth of being persistent, the knocking, the seeking, the asking of the Lord. Luke eleven nine says, And I say unto you, it shall be given unto you. Seek, 
and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Jesus went on to say in Luke 18, Now shall not God bring about justice for his elect who cry to him day and night, and will God delay long over them? I tell you, he will bring about justice speedily, especially for them. This is what God does. He brings about justice. Now, to the believers who were dispersed, they were under persecution, and they were Christians that had great hardships. 1 Peter 4, 7 says, Be of sound judgment, be sober of spirit for the purpose of prayer. Prayer is a part of our lives. Life is difficult, even when we're disappointed, even when we're faced with setback, we realize that prayer is how we're to live our life. We're to be persevering in prayer. Moms, I'm speaking to you today. We are to be constant. We are to be devoted to prayer. That's how we're to live our life. We're to ask God to do the impossible because that's his specialty. 1 Corinthians 14, 15 says, I shall pray with the Spirit, and I shall pray with the mind also. So all through the day, eyes open, hands busy, you're working, you're serving, you're ministering to your family, but you're praying. You're praying with your spirit, and you're praying with your mind. And God, I believe, loves to answer your prayers in order to put His power on display he demonstrates his power to you by answering these prayers. When you least expect it, God comes through. And he delivers on that heart's desire that you have persistently lifted up. Now, most believers, to be honest, they do not get serious about prayer until there's a calamity. Maybe a sickness in their family. Maybe a financial setback. Something changes. They begin to get up earlier. Maybe stay up later just to pray. And God allows these situations in our lives sometimes. Sometimes they're a result of our own choices. But prayer suddenly goes to a whole new level some of you moms know exactly what I'm talking about. We begin to pray with a fervency that we've never prayed before. And Paul describes calling out to the Lord with great passion and fervency. There's a second biblical truth, Paul's personal prayer request. It's in verse 19. Now, when Paul gets personal about his prayer requests, he doesn't pray for his ankles that hurt because maybe the, the shackles are too tight and they're, they're rubbing blisters on his ankles. He doesn't pray about his need for maybe better food because he's not eating well these days. He's not praying for these kinds of needs, even though they're real. Paul's personal prayer request in verse 19 is that utterance may be given to Paul for the opening of his mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, Ephesians 6, 19. He does not want to shrink back from proclaiming the truth of God's word with boldness. And so he's asking for a personal prayer request that he would do this. Moms, this is a great way to pray for your children, that your sons and your daughters would with boldness make known the mystery of the Gospels. Grandparents, grandmothers, this is a great prayer request that you would pray that your grandchildren would make known with boldness the mystery of the Gospel. Paul was in chains, but that was not his concern. His concern was the mystery of the Gospel and that it would go forth with boldness. Now, Paul was gifted. Paul was courageous. Paul was morally upright. And Paul was spiritually strong beyond measure. 
Yet he recognized his need that the Lord would help him. The Lord would spiritually gift him with, with boldness, making known the mystery of the gospel. He knew that the power and the blessing came from God's anointing. God's power would be upon him. I just want to say that when we feel sufficient in our own giftedness or our own personality, it's difficult for God to use us then. It's when we recognize our insufficiency, when we recognize our human weaknesses, that God can use you. When we are weak, He is strong. He actually will use your weaknesses to advance the gospel so that with boldness the mystery of the gospel can be proclaimed. The great apostle Paul wanted prayer that even as he was in chains that he would be an ambassador. This is Ephesians 6.20. He would live as an ambassador in chains that in proclaiming I may speak boldly, proclaiming the truth, the proclamation of the truth, he would speak boldly as I ought to speak. Now here at Christ Community Church, we often will greet one another or we'll end a service by saying, be bold, be the church, speak with boldness. And it's biblical. It's here that Paul speaks of it. And we, we recognize that he, he speaks about the boldness of living for him, speaking boldly. Joshua 1.9 says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. From the Old Testament to the New, we're to be bold. We're to be courageous. We're to be the church. You are the church. You're to be the church by being bold and boldly making known the mystery of the gospel. There's a third biblical truth. The Apostle Paul is in prison, but it doesn't stop him from seeing who he is in Christ, his identity in Christ, and what God has called him to be. Moms, you will shape the identity of your children as you read God's word to them, as you read God's word over them, as you pray for them, their personalities, their calling will become clear. They'll step into it. Think about it, moms. Don't you want your children to receive the reward that's in heaven for them? And that reward comes from following Christ, living for Christ, anticipating his soon return, and you will set that in their hearts. Even when Paul requested prayer for himself, Paul's purpose and his motive was not for self. It was not for creature comforts. It was for the gospel to be advanced. It was to encourage other believers. It was to glorify God with his life. Realizing that the Ephesian believers could not pray specifically or intelligently for Paul unless he spoke to them and told them of it. He writes in Ephesians 6, 21, but that you may also know of my circumstances, how I am doing. Tychicus, the beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, shall make known to you all these things whom I have sent to you for this very purpose, so that you may know about this and that he might comfort your hearts. Grandmas, be specific in those prayers over your grandchildren. Moms, be specific in those prayer requests over your children. Be a woman of prayer committed to changing and influencing the next generation because you've prayed in faith believing. All of your prayers are stored. They're a fragrance. They're an incense to the Lord. It's a beautiful fragrance to Him. Your prayers. The Lord never forgets your prayers. 
They're stored up for him. Now, I want you to realize that as a woman of prayer, you have a great influence. And as a woman of prayer, you put on strength. You clothe yourself with strength and dignity. You get stronger each day. It has nothing to do with the circumstances that you're facing. It's because of the word of God. It fortalece, it strengthens you. And you become a powerful woman of God. You have a Christ-like confidence. You're not fearful of the future. You're not fearful of what might be around you. Because your life is hidden with Christ in God. And you belong to God. And that's the Mother's Day present. I want to leave with you today. That you are a woman of prayer. You're a woman who knows of the greatness of God. And his covering over your life. And in conclusion this morning, I want to sing about the greatness of God. I want to sing about who He is in our lives. And, and even this, this hymn that it goes into, How Great Thou Art. He is the greatness in your life. And I want you to spread that to the next generation and to tell your children and your children's children about the greatness of God. Worship the Lord together this morning. This morning. Yeah.
God bless you for joining us today. We're so grateful for your faithful support. And we're thankful that you would pray for us. Pray specifically that our communities will be opened back up. That our churches can come together again. Ask the Lord to do a, a miracle work in this area. The churches of this land need to come back together. And I'm asking God to do a miracle in this area. And we'll watch him at work. He's always working, both to work and to will for his own good pleasure. And moms, thank you for your devotedness, for your perseverance, for being women of prayer. It makes such a difference in all of our lives, especially in the generation that is following behind you. Until we meet again, I want you to be bold. I want you to live with courage because you are the church. We represent the Lord Jesus Christ. Until we meet again, God bless you. Live for Christ. Heaven, I commanded you. Heaven, I commanded you. Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened.